that we, we do these. That's what he's been That's saying. what I want to do. This makes way This is one of those things that's either going to be the best idea I ever had or the worst idea I'd never thought of. I came back from PRI. I was all hyped up on race cars. So I was browsing online, searching literally race car, seeing what would come up for cheap. I found this. I didn't know anything about it, but it had a video being slid around in a parking lot and I was sold. So let's go check it out. All right, now I want to add this is the first time I've seen this thing in person. The guys have already checked that. Wow, it looks really tiny. <laughs> Dude, it is so tiny. Wow. I, it's got character. Yeah. All right, so I knew of what this is. This is a legend race car only through Okachan. He has one over in Japan and he races it, but I had no idea they have street bike engines in it. And when I watched the video, it's sliding around, did some math. I feel like this could actually be really great for drifting. Of course, it'd be really fun to take around the circuit, but it's, it's not terrible. It just needs a little, a little bit of, a little bit of shoe shine. We call this patina. Oh, she's definitely. It's so tiny. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I'm really excited to hear. It. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my best to resist the urge to fire it up and send it right to Redline and kind of do a little bit of preventative maintenance first. The guy that had it, um, I don't know if he raced it, but I know that he slid it around in his parking lot a lot, and that's probably not what this is designed for. So I want to make sure there's no cracks or anything. But these things weigh 1,300 pounds. They make 130 horsepower. New, they're supposed to be a very affordable way into racing, so they range from like 15 to 20 thousand dollars. This one I picked up for four grand. I think that's cheap. And in this video, we are on the quest to answer the questions: Is it cheap? Is it exciting? Is it reliable? Does it drift good? And is it competitive in drift? We know it's cheap, so now we get to find out the other stuff. So I do want to put this out there that this is probably one of those decisions where I could have gotten a nicer one for like $500 to $1,000 more. There's a lot of these that are for sale. I don't know why they're so cheap. Maybe people get into it and then they get out of it. But I needed it to be really cheap to be able to justify making the jump into it. I fit, but I definitely could fit better. It's a little tight. I'm a little tall for this. Maybe I can modify some things to fit. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm always, I always struggle with things because I end up just getting what's cheap instead of what's nice. But this is a proof of concept. And if it works well, then there's plenty of other options out there. Steering wheel's a little... <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. It's offset. See, well, they did that to make room for uh, for legs. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. This is great. <laughs> and then there's one screw that holds it in. I might need to need to make a little plate to uh, address that. Well, look, I can adjust the steering column up actually quite a bit. See? Yeah. That'd actually be pretty smart. So it's sequential. <laughs> I've always wanted to build something with a street bike motor, but I don't know enough about it. So hopefully this is my intro. <laughs> so it has a regular clutch? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I don't know. You know more about I mean, this than it, I do. Well, because I know sometimes when they do the shifter carts, they do like the clutch on the shifter handle. Like a... Oh, no, it's got a regular clutch pedal. And then just bam, bam. I want to put this out there, too. If you're in Central Florida and you know a lot about these things, I've been struggling to find information. For whatever reason, maybe this is like a, a pre-internet thing, or it's the people that are into this aren't into the internet a lot, but I've been having a hard time finding out much information. There's like eight pictures on Google I've been able to look at to try to figure out like how the suspension works and a lot, a lot of other little random stuff. I want to see the engine. So what does this do? I think that's a custom mod on there just for some air over the top of the <laughs> it's, it's actually powered too, that's yeah. funny. Did this guy have a farm? <laughs> it looks like it, yeah. Yeah, it, all the hay. Before we can drive it, we got a couple things we want to do. Uh, I want to change the oil on it just because this thing's obviously been driven in the dirt. Tie rod broke linen in the trailer, some filters need to be changed, and I got to address the steering wheel situation. I should probably weld up that crap. The body panel's all attached, good enough. Yeah. For the most part, okay. it's cracked over here. Yeah. It's separated here, so yeah, maybe we could so, uh, bolt that back together. Mosh mosh. Ima dajoube desu ka? Mo neru yo. Sumimasen. Demo Adam san chotto aita katta kara to atarashii kuruma katta no chotto misete ii desu ka? Oh hi. How do I say look at this? Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> I'm gonna let it warm up for a minute because I'm gonna change the oil. Weld up some cracks and we're gonna have some fun with this thing. decision the more we look at it you probably knew when you bought this thing it's definitely what a you're getting into. legend car <laughs> oh yeah do i really need to fix the welds yeah, yeah. the front the front one the only reason i want to fix it is just because the, the oil coolers and radiators and everything's yeah. attached yeah. i feel like that one i should definitely fix yeah i don't even want to work on my bmw i just want to work on this thing yeah, <laughs> <that's insane. laughs> i'm pretty excited uh oil temp sensor looks like isn't hooked up anymore oh yeah huh um that catch. is uh, some sort of a that's to keep the drain bolt from vibrating out. Which, that could be why the front yeah, that'll be tie rod end is banging that. into that because that's all bent. Yeah. Oh man, I just wanted a fun, ready to go machine. Luckily you can order all this stuff. We just need a local legend that knows the legends to come and help fix the legend. This is like when you buy one of those, like, you buy something from the store, but in, on the box it looks ready to go, but then you get it and it's like an assembly kit yeah. and you have to spend hours like, mm -hmm. Fixing it, putting it together. <laughs> this car will actually be really easy to make an angle kit for just because it's a basically a flat sheet of metal stock that you can shorten. But the problem is a clearance with the coil. So I'm looking to see maybe I can make some sort of spacer that will hold this spring up. That way when you turn the wheel to lock, it doesn't hit this. Mm. It's like a machine something that kind of keeps the spring up here. And then the only clearance issue you have is this little rod instead of this massive spring. Good idea. Yeah. I bit off more than I could chew. What am I going to do? This is not going to be fun to remove. Ready to race, he says. This happens to me every time. <laughs> I feel like whatever you put in would be better than that anyway. That is a sad, sad ball joint. Mike, stop. Yep. You'll get that on these small cars. We have resident FDF expert Ethan in town helping make us custom tie rods. I have a request for a custom... Uh, lower control arm ball joint? Oh boy. <laughs> so the nice thing is we have like pretty much every car's FDF kit on the shelf of Drift HQ, so hopefully he knows the parts well enough to be able to make us a custom thing using parts from other cars. While Ethan whips us up some custom suspension parts, I'm gonna give it a quick oil change. That way once it's fixed, it's ready to rip. Definitely has oil. It's definitely black. <laughs> Surprisingly, a big filter for a small engine. That's good. Yeah. Especially if you're racing this thing in the dirt. So, some of these cars they used in the dirt, some of them they used on asphalt. Judging by the tires, as soon as it's an asphalt one, but. No. Again, I need the local legend expert to come in and help. I see a couple things that have dirt written on them. No, so here's the thing. I think what happened is some, some guy, probably like me, said, oh wow, these old race cars are really cheap. This looks really fun to jump around in my field and it looks like it got jumped around in a field. Yeah. Stopped by AutoZone and picked up some Pennzoil. Lucky for me, they make something that should be perfect for this application. This is a full synthetic ATV UTV oil. These engines call for 1040, and then this specific oil is really good in dusty and dirty environments. A lot of dust on the concrete of the compound. This thing's gonna get dirty. And most importantly, it's really good for high revving engines and is compatible with a wet clutch. I think this is my first wet clutch. You'll probably prove me wrong because you guys do it a lot, but we use Pennzoil in all the builds. We know it, we trust it, we love it. And I'm gonna be letting this thing sing to the moon, so it's getting none other than the finest. Got a K9 oil filter. In case you don't know, the K9 oil filters always have those little sockets, so never worry about getting your filter stuck on there. We'll pre filter a little bit, spin this bad boy on, and one last thing to do on that. Fresh oil's in it, but we are missing a very key important thing for keeping this thing safe. It is only cooled by oil, there is no coolant, and the oil temp sensor currently isn't working. It seems like there's a cut wire, but it's tucked somewhere in this harness, so I'm gonna split it open, see what we got going on here. Let's see if I can get us to have a working oil temp sensor so I can have some peace of mind. I'll show you guys the sensor down here. It ain't got no wires. 
I had no idea what this thing revs to. I was just like, I wish I did that on camera. Mike, film the tack. You for it? You ready? That's like 12,000 RPM. What the f***? It seems like the oil temp's working now. It's finally moving, so I think we're good. 12,000 RPM. <laughs> Buries the needle. I'm, this is my. This is the highest revving car I own now. Yeah. I feel like it's kind of cheating. Yeah. <laughs> How come it doesn't sound as high pitch as some street bikes? It sounds more throaty. It's old. It's like a, well, it's old and it's a 900. Like this engine's probably. No, like 1200. Out, 1200. Yeah. Oh, so out of here. it's out of the 80s, 80s or 90s. Carbureted. Really? They only really started fuel injecting them in like the early-ish, late 2000s, like 2006-ish. So it's carbureted, and then they're, it's just kind of old. But like some of the newer 600s will rev almost to like 18,000. You're too smart. You're making me sound stupid on my own channel, Trevor. But it won't have that much. Hey, can you edit him out so it sounds like he doesn't know what he's talking about? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> and some new filters. Yeah, unfortunately we don't have any, so I'm gonna clean these. Yeah. You could have bought anything and chosen any other week, but this is the week he decided to mess with this. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. I'm getting there. So are we getting a bunch of these now? I think so. Right? I think this yeah. is what comes after the E36. Okay. Let me see that filter. That's like the, you guys probably have that in the keychains. We, we we don't, that's why I was asking you. I got one on my Del Sol valve cover. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is a bit too big. <laughs> see how pictures lie? Yeah. He put the picture like right up to it. <laughs> you know what I'm talking oh, about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a wee bit big. Yeah, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this one working all good and I'm gonna sell it to you and then I'm gonna get another one. Mm, that's the idea. Alright. Zip ties are made by friend. Oh. FDF tie rods about to be strong as boy. Shoo. It's actually perfect. Reds are still good in there. What's up, baby? Hey. It's either a really good idea or a really bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of Legends cars, what is this thing? It's the same price as the E36. Uh, okay, but revs a lot higher and yeah. way more twitchy. And yeah. Have you driven one? Uh, yes, I have. Oh, really? They're amazing. Really? Yeah. So this is a good idea. It's a great idea. I've never driven one. I don't know anyone that has one. Next year, this is the car that we... Yeah, we do these. That's what he's been That's saying. That's what I want to do. This makes way more sense. I want to figure out an angle kit and a hydro test. Yeah, test. yeah, this makes way more sense. I'll sell my E36 right now. I'll trade you. <laughs> There's probably a good trade for me, honestly. <laughs> oh, I'm getting ready, dude. We're so close. <laughs> all right, can you snag that up and I'll, I'll hop on the, the tire. Just let me know when you're welding all back out of the way. Right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind me, it's acting like a real racer down here. I'm squaring up the chassis. Everything is all mismatched, probably because this thing is used for circle track. Um, so camber's way off on both sides. Almost there, almost ready to test her out. A few more bolts to tighten, a few more things to square up. We're good to go. Got a good eyeball alignment? He was ready to test her out. So I text Chelsea and I said, have you ever driven a legend car? He didn't text me back, so I had to get one. I want to look at your E36. I want, you to look at, I want you to look at my legend. Hell yeah. <laughs> Dude, how cool is this thing? That's sick. Yeah, these are super fun. You've drifted one? They pull the wheels up easy, dude. Have you drifted one? I've driven them like properly. No, drifted. Not drifted. All right. We're going to find out today. 1200 motor, you said? Yeah. Sick. I'm so hyped up CDI on this CDI box set up. FDF tie rods. Yamaha motor. Did you put FDF tie rods on it? Yeah, they were smoked. Did you just cut, drill another hole in the knuckle, or what'd you do? No, I didn't do any angle mods yet. Okay. I haven't even driven the car. Typically, you just drill another hole in the knuckle for this kind of stuff. So I was gonna do that, but then I was gonna make a spacer to move the spring up, because the spring is like the point of contact in the front. Oh, okay. So the tie rods will hit the springs. Yeah, these are so cheap for like fun stuff. I know. They're I very don't... dangerous though. I... Are they? <laughs> yes. But it's got a cage. Sort of. Half the cage is box tubing usually. <laughs> well, he's like, you're not wrong. That's yeah. Box tubing. Pop. Hello, pop. 
<laughs> it's cool though because it's like sequential and yeah, like. I know. I gotta move it real quick. Sequential. Yeah, right. <laughs> Let's see if we can move this thing. <laughs> Those glasses make you look like you're in a cockpit. <laughs> I don't know if that's a compliment or it is, but. Well, take here. off. Where's the reverse on this? Do they have ah. I think there's a lever for it usually. There's no reverse? Usually no reverse. You go what? The you, back. you can't halfway it in between to get reverse? I don't think so, only. Oh, oh yeah, oh, I guess it's. Oh man. man. Never thought about that. That's a thing. I lost one of these because Chris is rushing me. Yeah, hurry up, dude. Yo, f you. I bet. Yo, f you, dude. <laughs> The elbow room is going to be really tight for drifting. I don't know how that's going to work. Especially with this thing. Oh, buddy. steering makes it really tough. Yeah, because it's like so sensitive, like there's no ratio reduction, it's so it's super hard. It doesn't self steer at all either. Yeah. Do you think, I could probably lower the rear pressure because it feels kind of loose in the rear compared to the front. <laughs> Like small modifications. Yeah. Hear, hearing a bike motor with wheel spin yeah. is like a weird thing. Yeah, so good. cool. <laughs> I need an XL version of that. Yeah. Right. There's plenty of room. <laughs> I want to get more side in it. You don't think I could just lower the pressure and get some? I want to try lowering the pressure. It's really hard to drive right now. Yo, the FD champion is putting air pressure in my legend car right now. That's right. <laughs> How crazy. Dude, this is like my dream. It's so rowdy, right? <laughs> no, I was talking about you putting air in my tire. Oh, <laughs> I just meant this. These no, things are so like, you don't know what's going to happen, so it makes it so fun. Yeah, I feel like the more you drive good drift cars, the more you want to drive bad ones. Yeah, duh. Because it's more of a challenge. 100%. <laughs> Why do you think I like driving all your cars? Hey. Ooh. <laughs> Steel wheel and it's leaking air, so. Man. Almost. A little bit more. Oh, so close. So close. Chelsea Denova, the champion's banging my wheel. Dial, dude. No more leaks. <laughs> oh! <laughs> the champ just broke my hood. Grills, bro. Grills. All hood pins Denova. Oh, oh. 
You got a zip tie? <laughs> now we got hurt. Hey, hey, Legendary. Hey, 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 hey. Working on my legend. <laughs> Dude. Oh. Hey. 96,000 monthly listeners, thank you very much. <laughs> Yo, let, me a, let me get a bar about this moment right here. Uh, I heard you're the guy for that. My thing with whip him is I get in the car, get out of the car. Chelsea Denofa Pan Hard Bar. God, that looks turn cool. one way better than the other. Well, it's only meant to turn one way anyway. I've got so much <laughs> dust in my eyes and love in my heart right now. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you want to drive it? Chelsea, you want to hop in? I'm, I'm happy. I'm content. I had my fun. Now I want to develop this into a weapon. <laughs> I can't even. <laughs> Carbon Kevlar. Odibachi, I'm coming for you. <laughs> Specifically you. Bachi. <laughs> With this. Got enough forward dig. <laughs> Is it exciting? Yes. Is it cheap? Yes. Does it drift easily? No. But does it drift? Yes. Is it competitive? We're not going to find out today because I'm not going to drive this with another car. But the most competitive drifter on the planet is going to hop in it. And he can tell us if this car will be competitive or not. <laughs> this isn't a fake smile, it's that exciting. You can't not smile with 12,000 RPM. It's very true. It's the most true statement ever. What other world can you drive a car that revs to 12,000 RPM for four grand? Yeah, no, that's amazing. A street bike, we, that's not the same. We've already decided that this is next year's vehicle. That's next year. For you, we decided it yeah, for we you. Decided and it I, for I you. think it'll be really easy to make it. health insurance <laughs> Did you sign the waiver? All the dirt track dudes in the world are like, these idiots don't even know. <laughs> Dude, the tires are lasting really long. They are. That's the beauty of Chelsea, a light car. The, the consumables are low. Yeah, it doesn't even have coolant to go you. through. It's just oil. <laughs> oh! I was like, am I in gear? <laughs>
There's a lot of little updates we've done to the compound. I haven't fully impacted this in a video, but pretty much everyone's in town like we do once a year for the Invitational, except this year we're just hanging out, chilling, and we're gonna be bashing doors with E36s. I thought maybe I'd be able to drive this with E36s, but I think this thing's gonna need about a week of D, maybe a little bit of R too, um, before I can get it where I'm, I'm ready for it. I got fountains. They're sick, they're a little noisy. I apologize. Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, thank you, champion. For it's so sick. Driving my legend. It's Cam. super fun. That was good. Uh, so yeah, um, this car doesn't have any purpose other than me trying to explore it as a feasible drift car. And I will continue to explore that. I hope you guys in, uh, enjoyed the video. I had a lot of fun. I'm excited on my new purchase. Stay tuned for, is it reliable? And is it competitive? When you